Uh, tell us about Ruben Amarine then, uh, Mark. Mm. Fa big favourite now, yeah, obviously, to be the new coach. Yeah, well, I went over to Portugal to do a piece in Amarim last season when it looked like he was going to go to Liverpool and that didn't happen. So, but he is an up-and-coming rising star as a coach. He's 39 years old. He's won back-to-back -back titles with Sporting. They're unbeaten this season at the top of the league, unbeaten in the Champions League. So he, he really is a guy to watch. But there's, there's two issues with Amarim that I'd be a little bit concerned about if I was a United fan. First of all, he's been linked with a lot of clubs and he never leaves Sporting. Liverpool, Bayern, Barcelona, West Ham last season, all had a look at him, none took, none took it on. The second one is that he's, a, he's absolutely wedded to three at the back. He plays 3-4-3, three, three, and that is what he does. That, that is his system. So, you know, we've seen Antonio Conte was successful in the Premier League with three at the back, but there's not been many others. And if you're going to hire a guy that's got a big reputation... He's got a bit of Mourinho about him. He's got a bit of swagger. He, he, he mm. likes himself and he's he backs it up. But if you're going to Man United mid-season and you're suddenly saying to that back four, we're going to play three at the back now, will it get better quickly or will it get worse quickly? I think long-term, it will be a great appointment. But I just think parachuting him in mid-season with that squad of players, it could be a difficult situation because I don't know how you play three at the back with those players. I mean, look, you've got a full who like to attack. Luke Shaw, if he's ever fit, could be a great left wing back. But... Those centre-halves, three at the back, I don't know. I'd, I'd ask the guys about that one. Is he going to get the job, Mark? I'd be very surprised if he didn't get the job. I think an element of this is that he's, he's earned the right to get a big job now. He, he is one of the, the, he's the next on the rank in terms of the coach in Europe. But one slight fly in the ointment is that two weeks ago, Hugo Viana, the sporting director at Sporting, moved to Man well, He will move to Man City at the end of the season to replace Chiki Bagurustein. And the talk in Portugal last week was that Amram is being lined up to replace Pep Guardiola at Man City. Now, obviously, Pep Guardiola right now is still the Man City manager. So, is this a ploy by Amram to find out what's going on with Pep at City and Man United being used? Or, as Amram found out that Pep isn't leaving Man City, and he's, if he's going to get a chance in the Premier League, it's now with Man United, so I'll take it. But I do think that the Man City cloud is one that United needs to be wary of because Hugo Viana is a big part of what happened at Sporting with, with Ruben Amram, and he's got to Man City. So, that's part of the equation. Can Amarine play up front, Mark? Because let's face it, a big problem that United have. They've got no one to put the ball in the back of the net. You know, stats are stats or whatever. But when it comes to hey, chances on, created, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you look at the fact that they're the fourth best in the Premier League and they can't find the back of the net. 105 chances, eight goals. Like, we talk about personnel, you talk about whoever it is that comes in. But that's a huge problem that United have to face. Xerxes, you know, Rasmus Hoyland, Marcus Rashford. <laughs> Yeah. It's a problem solely of their own making, isn't it? I mean, they've, they they spent 110 million pound on Hoyland and Xerxes over the last two summers, right? Xerxes, I don't think he'll ever make it. He's not quick enough. He's not dynamic enough to score goals. And Hoyland, he might come good, but he's not ready right now. But you know, the one the one plus, if you're looking at Ruben Amorim coming, is that he's, Victor Jokeres at Sporting has been a sensation in the last 18 months at Sporting Lisbon. You know, he was at Coventry City prior to that. And, and Amarim's taken him to Sporting and turned him into one of the most sought-after strikers in Europe. So maybe there's a magic touch there. Maybe he knows how to get the best <laughs> out of strikers. So perhaps Amarim comes in, he turns Ruben Hoy uh, what's his name? <laughs> Hoyland into Haaland. Who knows? It, <laughs> that's what they're hoping for anyway. Do you agree? Do you think that you could see Rasmus Hoyland becoming Erling Haaland, as Mark Ogden says, it's definitely going to happen, Mario, when the new manager comes in? <laughs> No, I think I think look, you know that that is never going to happen. But I'm just saying, like you understand. Look, we have to be honest. Um, when we look at the game, we have to be realistic. I think when a new coach comes in, it's the character that's going to talk, and that is one of the key things. You understand for the ones that are staying on, because you know what you guys highlighted. You understand. You know, uh, you talked about the Licht and all those guys. If he's going to play three at the back, it's also going to be tricky for them, eh? So you come to a new coach, you come to a new club. I think the biggest, biggest issue at Man United has been, you know, since Ten Hag been there, he has always been building his team. And there has to come a moment in football where you say, stop, we, this is what we have, and now we're going to work on this. And I think I've never seen that at Man United. I have watched Man United, but he have never stopped building. And I think that became the problem. Because every time there was a new player, you talk about the middle of the park, a new player had to come in. You talk about the, the, the back end, okay, two defenders come in. You're right back, then you, 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 you know, like the Ligt come in, center defender. So every time they were almost like, it's like a tap was open and you try to, you know, handle the leaking from the tap. And I think that was the biggest problem at Man United because that's why they never made it to become a proper team 
that really could compete against anybody because that's what we're used to. And sometimes we maybe act a little spoiled because Man United always been a top team and now seeing them fall, everybody's shocked. Not even a Man United fan. Like I'm not a Man United fan, but I'm still watching and going like, what is happening there? And that is not a good sign. And uh, we could be here, obviously, all day going through Manchester United problems. Or we could problems. fix uh, Mario's uh, leaky tab. Well, <laughs> 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 yeah, the plumbers are expensive. Wait, 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 They're wait, expensive plumbers. <laughs>